Okay, so here we are at the Zinn factory, looking forward to the factory tour. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, as most of you will be aware, a few weeks ago I posted on my community page what questions would you like me to ask them while I'm visiting them over in Frankfurt. Now, I feel most of the questions I was able to ask and get a pretty good answer to, so bear with me on this and we'll go through some of those questions and you'll get to see some videos about how they fill the hydro watches, fill the ga gas in the watches and little bits like that. So. One of the first questions you guys were asking, and I got to put this to the marketing team there, uh, Miss Volker and Katerina, um, both really nice people. He was wearing the U212 and she was wearing a, what was it? It was a U50 black blue dial. And they were really nice people. They were superstars to talk to, really friendly and nice. So the first question I asked them, Obviously, what are the delays about? Because as we all know at the moment, there's massive delays on the Zim watches. And basically, they were putting it down to high demand. Um, some of their suppliers have got problems. And obviously, this all spans from COVID as well, because you've got people suddenly contracting COVID and then having to take time off work. So it slowed down the production um, of, you know, a lot of these parts. Plus, there is a serious lack of watchmakers in the surrounding area. Frankfurt is mostly known as a financial centre, not exactly a watchmaking centre. So these are all things which are contributing to the high delays which are now on their watches. Now, obviously, a lot of you are asking about the clasps as well saying you know you'd like to see an updated class with an on-the-fly adjustment and i did ask this and they said it is something they are looking into so they didn't give a definitive answer on that but it, you know they are aware of this as well they've said that so they are looking into actually developing something which will help with this um a couple of guys asked about the availability of the new butterfly clasp and basically, you can get the butterfly clasp, turns out, the new style one with the fold over center link, like I have in the anniversary version of 144. Now, they said that over in America it might be a bit harder to get hold of, but if you contact them directly, it is something which is available in the main factory, and I believe certain retailers can get it for you. Now, one of the questions I wanted to ask is. I'd always not been too sure about this, was the D3 system of pushes on things like the U1000 and the EZM13. And I wanted to know, can you use these pushes underwater? And basically, the answer came back, yes. It is something which can be used underwater, so I think that is a really you know, cool system. And not many companies do it, so that I'm, I'm really impressed with. Now, there are some more questions, but... I'll get into them in a second. Now, as we were walking round, I actually got to go to the uh, room where they recondition all the cases. And I got to meet this absolutely lovely gent. He was such a nice guy. And he was showing me how they recondition a lot of cases. And he actually said his workload has, you know, um, also grown as of, as of late, especially with the introduction of things like electric scooters and e-bikes because obviously more people are traveling around on these and more people are falling off them so his actual workload has got greater and he showed me um, different processes he uses and I found that super in interesting and I have to admit what a cracking gentleman really nice guy and basically from there we then went along to speak to Kyle, who's their chief watchmaker. And again, really nice guy. You got the real feeling that they're a family there. It's not, they were just people working at a place. They really seem to, you know, really enjoy what they do. And I think that's just a great, if really, is kind of, you know, if you, if you go to work and enjoy what you do, you don't actually work. 
So anyway, I was talking to him and he was showing me a breakdown of the watches, um, how they do it, but he did actually mention to me that obviously there is a serious lack of watchmakers coming through these days. Even though they do offer an apprenticeship kind of system over there, they just can't get the staff. They need more staff. So, you know, if you're young and you want to look into a trade, watchmaking is definitely a, a trade with a future. Now, um, while I was there, he was lucky enough, well, I was lucky enough, sorry, for him to actually uh, take my 103 I've just got. Um, I've just brought an oldie 103 and he actually regulated it for me. So really top, uh, top chap, I have to say. Now, back to a couple more questions. Um, some people asked, um, why do we see the U-series watches which are made of U-boat steel? Why is the bracelet not made of U-boat steel? And it all comes down to cost. If they were to manufacture the U-boat steel on the bracelet, it would be obscenely much more expensive. So that's one reason why they don't do that. Um, one of the questions I was asked was, I put to them, will there be a new EZM model coming up soon? And basically they said yes. Would they um, enlighten me in any way, shape or form? An outstanding no. So there will be a, uh, a new EZM coming, but as of yet, we don't know what it is. So, and after I met Carl, basically they were showing me how they put the oil into the um, hydro watches. And this was really interesting because when I visited there 13 years ago, I weren't allowed to see any of this. Now, they were showing me an old machine, which they originally used for doing this procedure. And basically, it was really interesting to see it. Now, obviously, they do it quickly for just purposes of the video I was taking. But realistically, this is a day or so. Yeah, this is a few, I think they said three hours work time normally. But the advantage they say they have now, they have a bigger machine which can do many, many more watches um, at once. So, you know, this process has been speeded up. That's why when you send a hydro model in, it is obviously a lot quicker than the full automatic um, service. But do be aware, they've been selling these watches still for 15 plus years. And at any time, they have got a lot of these watches which are being worked on. They also actually showed me the machine which they use for putting the um, inert gas into the watches. Now, it turns out they can do two watches at a time, but they can be done quite quickly. They also showed me the different machines for both testing the temperature variations of the... Um, what's the best way? Uh, the to test the regulation of the watches which use the special oil so it can go down to minus 45 and so forth and they do this for every single watch and that was very interesting they also showed me um they have like a uv tester which tests um the longevity of the markers and so forth when you know when basically subjected to a high uv factor and also the machine they use to test the the water resistancy of the hydro models. Because let's face it, a bog standard normal like 500 meter um, test kit you use for the standard style watches isn't going to even break a sweat when it comes to a hydro watch with 5 kilometers or 12 kilometers of case resistance. So they actually showed me out and it looked so industrial. It was really cool. Now, a couple more of the questions. Um, will we see a return of the EZM1 in its original 41mm size? That's a def That they said no, but they said they can't see it happening. Will that watch also be available in their everyday catalogue? Will there ever be a return of EZM1 in that form? And they've said no, they can't see that happening in the future. Now... Also, why is uh, a couple of you asked, why is there only one dealer in the US? And basically that came down to an exclusivity rights I think watch buyers had when they took out the deal with Zinn. So that's why you'll only ever see one. 
Now, a couple of people, I think one guy asked, will we ever see a silicon strap with the fitted ends, like you see um, the standard silicon strap, which molds to the side of the case, will we see that with a buckle and a pin and buckle? Now, I thought that would be actually be quite a good system. So I actually had, you know, agreed with you on that one, but it's not something they've looked into, so they can't see that happening. Um, another question was, the Le Manier movement, can they still get parts for it? Now, turns out every so often they've managed to find some old Le Manier, you know, spare parts hanging around, but at the moment they can still service that watch. But there could be a stage in the future when they simply cannot get parts for it. So that would be a bit of a shame, really. But these are all things what happens when you buy a vintage movement. So I wish I could have took more video while I was there, but to be fair, when I, you know, I could have done with a cameraman really to take video while I'm chatting to him, but unfortunately that's the way it is. But at least we got the questions out there and yeah, we were lucky enough to ask them and actually ask them at source. Um, at the very end of the tour, I went into the shop and to be fair, the shop there is fantastic. It is just yeah, Nirvana, it's it's heaven for anyone who's into their Zim watches. Almost everything is there. And even the guy who was working in the shop was such a nice guy. Um, he, I think he was wearing a UX. And I think it sounds like most of the guys who work, most of the guys and girls who work there, when they join the factory, join the team, they're allowed one Zim watch. And it was so interesting talking to them and... You know, I, I remember Katerina saying she loves the U50. That's her favourite. Um, the guy who was working in the shop, he said for him the best is the UX. And it was just, you really got a feeling the people there really enjoyed it. All were on first name terms with each other. It just seemed like such a friendly, nice place to be. So anyway, guys, I'll have to leave you with that. Um, wish I could have took more video, but there you go. Okay, all the best and stay tuned. Okay, take care. Bye.